Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. We begin this Holy Week and we hear, uh, we move the story from the triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday all the way to the cross and ultimately to the resurrection. This past Wednesday night I reviewed with the confirmation students and guides the importance of Holy Week in our church year calendar as it recounts for believers uh, Jesus' passion, the story of his last days beginning with Palm Sunday today and ending on Easter Sunday next Sunday. Palm Sunday is an interesting Sunday. Pastor Ron Adams in an article for the Christian Century magazine writes this about today's processional gospel. Our gospel reading for Palm Sunday begins like an espionage novel. Jesus draws two of his followers aside. He gives them a mission. Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. The two disciples go and find the colt. The question is asked, the password is given, the Lord needs it. It's an odd beginning to an odd story. There's a suggestion of secrecy and premeditation. Arrangements are made, plans are formulated, and in the end, the transfer goes off without a hitch. It's like a Cold War story of the Berlin Wall encounter in that anxious space between freedom and captivity. Well, the the next scene is very different. Jesus moves from being the orchestrator of events and activities to someone literally along for the ride. The disciples bring the colt and they set Jesus on it, which could mean anything from giving him a boost to literally putting him on the, the colt. The energy is now changing from, to those surrounding Jesus. They are the instigators. The people throw their cloaks on the ro- ground before Jesus as he starts his ride down the mountain. They sing praises to God for all the deeds of power that they had seen. The story ends with Jesus in a conversation with some Pharisees who ask him to make his disciples settle down. Luke does not tell us why they do this. Perhaps they disapprove of the disciples' behavior. With so many tourists in town for the Passover, maybe they were wary of a potential disturbance. Maybe they were genuinely concerned for Jesus' safety. Whatever their intentions, Jesus' answer is this. If these were silent, the very stones would shout out loud. To be honest, I don't always know what to make of this story, nor do I always know how we celebrate it. I don't know if you noticed this about the story, but in Luke's version of uh, Palm Sunday, there are no palms, just cloaks, just cloaks on the road, spread on the road before him that day. But in the interest of not wanting to mess with 2,000 years of church tradition, we decided not to change the name to Cloak Sunday, and we did buy the palms to hand out. Well, we love it. We love it when the children process around the sanctuary waving the palm branches as we all join in singing all glory, laud, and honor. You know, they struggle to stay in line, and I saw some of them were carrying two two palm branches, and it's a little hard to be coordinated and to march and wave palm branches, but the kids, they were great. It's a heartwarming scene, and it really is a a beloved opportunity for children to be participating in worship. But even so, even with, even that, with that wonderful scene of the children, there's still a heavy cloud of doom that trails around behind them in the sanctuary. You know, their, their shouts of praise are heartfelt. There's no guile in their steps. There's nothing cynical about the way they're waving their branches. Yet we know what will happen next in this story. We know what it means for Jesus to set his face to go down the mountain and into Jerusalem for this last time. 
There's an inherent conflict in our observance this day. Our children cheer as Jesus rides into the city, a city that will soon kill him. I hate to say this, but, but part of me agrees with the Pharisees who try to stop all this cheering. Part of me wants to say, let's, let's tone it down a little. Can't you see where this is leading? Don't you know what is happening and is waiting to happen in Jerusalem? This is not a parade. This is a funeral processional. Put the palm branches away. Use your inside voices. But remember Jesus' reply to the Pharisees. If these were silent, the stones themselves would shout out loud. Jesus' words challenge us to take another look, to re-examine the scene, to turn our eyes from what we know lies ahead and waiting before us, and instead give our full attention and our full focus on the one astride the colt. Jesus' words challenge us to recall his mighty deeds of power that we have heard in again and again in worship on Sunday, how he healed the sick, how he fed the multitudes, how he cast out demons and even raised people from the dead. And so we are called upon to praise him and offer our praises to God who sent him into this world, to recognize Jesus for who he truly is and join in singing, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. And so it is we tell the story of Palm Sunday again this year, and we're filled with a little anxiety as we watch those two bold disciples make their rendezvous with the owner of the colt, and we relax once they've witnessed the sign and the countersign, and we can maybe laugh at the joyful exuberance of the followers who hoist Jesus on top of that colt's back, and we give our children palm branches and invite them to march and shout and sing and join the crowd walking with Jesus toward Jerusalem. And yes, we're still aware of that cloud following our dancing children. It's right there in front of us, and it's unavoidable. But once again, we refuse to let it dampen our children's enthusiasm for this opportunity to show us adults how praise is really done. We do this not as an act of denial of what comes next, but as an act of obedience and worship. You know, the part of me that thinks it's all too much, it's too loud, it's too celebratory, well, I should take a seat to that. Because if we don't sing, if we don't sing, the stones will shout out loud. So we may as well sing. We may as well sing praises to God and to Christ whose deeds of power have been seen by us. The Palm Sunday story calls us into an in-between place, into that anxious space between freedom and captivity, between companionship and betrayal, between outrageous joy and unspeakable sorrow, between life and death. Somewhere between Bethany and Jerusalem, a parade is forming that is also in a certain kind of light, a funeral processional. We know what is coming, but we're not there yet. We are in between and we are asked to sing and be uncomfortable singing even as we weep. But it is the way of those who trust in this new life it is the way of disciples as followers of Christ. And so throughout this week, we will hear again that passion story. We'll go on Monday, Thursday to the Lord's Supper where Jesus will give them a new commandment that they love one another and he will wash their feet and he will give them bread and wine, his very body and blood. And on Good Friday, we can go to the cross and to hear the story, once again, of Jesus' execution. And then we will come again next Sunday to hear the good news that the tomb is empty. 
We will hear again the rest of the Passion story. And as we do so, let us always keep our eyes and our attention fixed on the one whose love is life-changing for us and for all of creation. The parade is almost over, and so let us sing and prepare once again for this holy week and the Lord's Passion. Amen.